Hi, this is Asya Now, and you're watching The Weekly Wrap. First up, convicted serial rapist Selva Kuma Subaya has received a hostile reception since returning to his home country of Malaysia on Tuesday. Selva Kuma was deported to Malaysia after serving a 24-year prison sentence for sexually assaulting dozens of women in Toronto, Canada. Since his return, two states of the country, Sabah and Sarawak, have banned him from entering the state, describing Selva Kumar as a high-risk individual. Several Malaysians also took to cyberspace to express their fears and concerns at his return. In the Philippines, a massive fire at a shanty town in Manila has left 15,000 people homeless overnight. The huge blaze swept through a crowded shanty community on Wednesday, engulfing over a thousand houses. Some residents returned to salvage scraps and whatever that was left of their belongings. However, many families say that the fire had destroyed everything. Seven people were injured in the fire that came just a week after another blaze killed a worker and injured over a hundred people in an industrial fire in South Manila. Next, a Malaysian aid ship carrying goods for Rohingyas in Myanmar and Bangladesh docked at the Yangon port on Thursday. Some 200 tons of food was offloaded at the port and the remaining cargo will be taken to Bangladesh. The aid shipment has stirred opposition in Buddhist-majority Myanmar, where many see the Rohingyas as illegal immigrants from Bangladesh. Several dozen Buddhist monks and nationalists demonstrated outside the port terminal in protest of the Rohingyas. Moving on, Indonesia said it had accepted Australia's apology after teaching materials deemed offensive to Jakarta led to a partial suspension of tithes. The dispute erupted last month when the materials were spotted by a visiting Indonesian officer at an Australian army base where Indonesian forces were training. The material in question referred to Indonesia's eastern province of Papua needing to be independent. It reportedly also discredited the nation of Indonesia, its ideology and armed forces. However, despite the apology, no decision has been made yet on fully restoring defence ties. Lastly, in Singapore, the schooling family has been named the Straits Times Singaporean of the Year. Olympic swim champion Joseph Schooling and his parents won the award on Monday, beating 11 other contenders. Although Joseph couldn't attend the ceremony due to school and training commitments, he said that his parents were most deserving of the award for their support and contributions that made him an Olympic gold medalist. The family received a trophy and 20,000 Singapore dollars in cash prize during the ceremony. Congratulations! We now head over to Bangkok with our Thailand partner Nation TV for the latest roundup from the Northern ASEAN region. Thank you Kuala Lumpur. Here are the latest stories from mainland Southeast Asia. Thailand's new king has appointed the new Supreme Patriarch. The newly crowned king of Thailand has appointed the new Buddhist Supreme Patriarch, ending a year of tussling over the significant position that have been filled by politics and allegations of corruption. Sumdet Pramaha Muni Wong, 89 years of age, the abbot of Wat Ratchabapit in Bangkok will be the head of more than 300,000 monks in Thailand. He also would automatically lead the Sangha Supreme Council of Monks. He has spent eight full decades in monasteries before succeeding the late Supreme Patriarch who died in 2013 aged 100. The council had proposed their favoured candidate last year, but the junta vetoed him and nominated Somdet Pramaha Muniwong for the post, which was officially endorsed by King Maha Wachiralongkorn on February 7. Industry products made in China have already affected handmade crafts in Laos. Local media reports that sales of handmade products like sin or skirts by local Lao artisans has dropped by 30% since the imitation skirts from China entered the market in recent years. 
Artisans and business people are calling upon the authorities to ban the sale of factory-made items in a bid to preserve the traditional craft, which is a way of life for many Lao people. Meanwhile, consumers argue that with the rising cost of living, they cannot afford to continue purchasing traditionally made items, some of which are priced at over 2 million keep or 240 US dollars. Female drivers now take tourists around Phnom Penh on a motorbike ride. Although motorbikes are prevalent in Cambodia's capital city, Phnom Penh, it is still considered very rare to find female drivers. The perception of girls driving motorbikes is not too good in Phnom Penh, as some customers may be mistaking them for working in the sex industry. A group of girls have started what they call the Moto Girl Tour, where they offer rides but set out strict rules to customers as to avoid sexual harassment. Customers should not hold on to the driver but to the handle behind the motorbikes. There's a new bus cafe attracting customers in Yangon. A cafe in Yangon is gaining popularity for being unique because the cafe is literally inside a bus. A pair of brother and sister started a cafe business five months ago, offering a mix of restaurant and cafe food. Customers can choose to sit inside the bus or outside in the patio for some fresh air. One of the owners said that the engine and the steering wheel still function, so that they can even turn the cafe into a moving bus cafe. The Yangon Bus Cafe is located inside Gondaji Park in Myanmar's former capital city. Vietnam Temple has been vandalized by thoughtless tourists. One of Vietnam's most remote temples has fallen victim to severe vandalism by thoughtless tourists after the Tet Festival. Just before the New Year break, Saigonier featured Linh Quê Pap An, a mesmerizing monastery based deep in Vietnam's central highlands. The temple had managed to stay fairly secluded until recently when a local pop sensation decided to film part of his latest music video in this compound's beautiful courtyard. Since then, the Buddhist venue has been receiving a lot of attention from local tourists from all over the country, especially during the week of the Tet, when horde of visitors flocked to the compound, leaving behind a trail of trash and damaged facilities. And that's it for the updates. This has been me, Patsurang Desha, Putarang Si, back to you, KL. Thank you, Bangkok, and thanks for watching. I'm Victoria Brown. Have a pleasant weekend.